So here in the, in, the, in the PowerPoint slide, you have everything explained step by step, okay? So click on configure, add rules to be checked, okay? So first I select the, the layer I want to check. Since I only have one layer, there's not much uh, complication. And then I choose a, a rule, okay? Then when we uh, have selected the rule, we just click on this button, add rule, and it will be listed downwards, okay? So the three real rules I want you to check is that the, uh, the layer has no gaps, the layer has no invalid geometries and the layer has no overlap. So we have to go through this process three times. We select the, the layer, we select the rule, and then we click, we, we, sorry, we click on add rule. Okay, and then we will have the three lists, the three items in our list. Okay? What a gap means? So when I have a polygon like this, this is the EA1 and this is the EA2. Okay, it's when my vertex sometimes does not match. So I have a space, a blank space here in the middle. When the boundaries does not match, this is a gap. Okay? That, the, that means that the, the surface is not covered by the EAs. Then, if an overlap, it's when my EA1, I could have used this. So, EA2, so this is a gap. An overlap, it's when the boundary of the EA2 pass over the other enumeration area. So we have a space where both boundaries are occupying, okay? This is kind of a, this is a little bit the concept of the unique IDs in the databases. When we work in a spatial environment, it's the same, but our key ID is the space, is the surface. So if um, one EA is unique because it has a unique ID, this is the table database uh, concept, but in the space is that I'm occupying I extend that any other future in my framework can occupy. Okay, the space that EA1 is occupied cannot be occupied by the EA2. Okay, this is the concept of overlap. And then the geometry errors is when we have something is wrong with the geometry. For example, when I have one vertex here, one vertex here, and then my segment cross another segment of the polygon. So I have a, here a false vertex, okay? The right way to do this type of geometry would be like doing like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Another typical invalid geometry is when I have one vertex defining one line, another vertex, and another two or three vertex overlapping. The vertex is unique as well. So the space my vertex is occupying cannot be occupied by another vertex belonging to the same EA. Can be occupied by vertex from EA2 because we are both generating the boundary, okay? But the same feature, the same EA has vertex, cannot be repeat, cannot be overlapped, okay? 
So, but I think we're going to understand that better in the, better in the program rather than with uh, my <laughs> my draws. And then once we have the list, we click OK and validate all. So I'm going to do the same. Okay, now I have configured, I set up the, what I'm looking for, which type of errors I'm, I'm searching. Okay, I click OK. And then I click on this control here, which is called Validate All. Okay, click on Validate All. And then I will have a list, it will take a little while, and I will have a list of errors here in my right you will see type of error gap okay and it's a bunch it's 530 errors there and you will see that they are highlighted in red okay using the topology checker tool by double clicking on the error it will direct us where the error is, okay? So if I have, for example, for my first uh, gap error, if I double click here, it will take me where the error is, okay? How, which is now the process of, uh, to clean the, those errors? What we have learned this morning that can be useful to undertake this operation. The snapping tool, the editing tool, we know how to work with vertex, we know how to snap them. So, okay, just uh, a couple of, of things. Uh, with this red uh, color that is used to highlight the error, can be removed when we are working on the error correction. We can remove it by unchecking so errors, and then we have the gap, and we can work with the we can work on the uh, data cleaning. Okay, on the layer cleaning. Um, another one. It's very important that my layer and my project are in the same uh, projection, okay? If my project has a different projection, when I click here to um, ask the topology checker tool to send me, to bring me to the error, it will, it will bring me somewhere else because we are using different projections because the topology checker is using the projection from the project okay so when it's different you will have you will click on the error you will go abroad you won't see the error and this is because we have different projections okay in, uh, in this exercise I didn't want to complicate things but just to let you know it's it's a uh, it's it's written in the in the slide but just to 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 show you that uh, can can be problematic, so so did you manage to find uh, to click on the error and be sent to the location? Good. So now what will we do? We we are going to uh, set the uh, snapping options in order to have the magnetic field or the s s s snapping tool ready to make our uh, work easier, okay? So, first of all, we start our editing session 
by clicking on the yellow pencil button. We click on the Node tool. And then, in order to set up the, uh, the snapping options, we, it's written here. We open the snapping tools, and then we enable topological editing, and we enable avoid intersections. OK? So this is something that we have done uh, 15 minutes ago. We go to snapping options. We go to advanced, we check enumeration areas to clean, and then we set the tolerance. I'm going to give you a tip. This is using meters, OK? So if we use mapping units, this is easier for us. So we can try with uh, 100. And I forgot to. Uh, you uh, check avoid intersections and enable topological editing. Okay. So now, if I start my editing session and I click on the uh, node tool, the tool that we were using to drag, create, and delete a vertex, and then I click here, I can check if my snapping options are well configured. For me, it's OK. 100 meters tolerance, 100 map units, it will, it will, it will be suitable. OK? So the, now, to uh, fix those gaps, the only thing I have to do is just um, well, put the different vertex together. If I have a vertex that uh, I don't, I don't need it, I will delete it. If I need to create new vertex to, well, define the, the boundary. So you can try to just uh, clean different errors. So now we think that we have a fix that specific a gap, instead of clicking here on check all the errors in the, of the shape file, that you have seen that it takes a little while, OK? And even it's a small shape file, but when you have a whole country, it might take like 30 seconds to process, OK? So you, can, you have this option that it's validate extend. So it's going to validate what is displayed in the map canvas. So we, we finish our correction, and then we validate extent, and we can check whether we succeed or not repairing the layer, the shape file. And now, for the moment, we have only four errors. We had one gap here, one gap there, overlaps that I will explain uh, later on. Okay. So what I want you to do now is like try to first uh, set the snapping. Uh, options and fix at least 10 gaps okay and when we have finished of uh, when we have finished of this first uh, uh, fixes we just check all and see I had before 530 now I have 527 for me it would be a long day okay with 500 euros <sighs> uh, <laughs> OK, here, to fix gaps, we click on Node tool. We repair the node connection. We click on Validate Extend to see if the fixes, to, to validate just the um, geometries that are within our screen, just the extent of our map canvas. And then, like this, we can monitor uh, whether we fix properly the error or not, OK? And as I was mentioning, it's recommended to first clean all the gaps. Now, we're going to learn how to clean 
overlaps. The overlaps, if you go through the topology checker uh, menu, I will pass, I pass uh, by right now, okay? If you go to, you scroll down, okay, in the topology checker, you will find at the, uh, on the, at the bottom of the list, overlaps. You can click on one of the overlaps, Okay. Because they are highlighted in green. Okay. There's a bunch of. So how do we fix overlaps? For example, this one that we don't have gaps errors uh, around. How do we fix those overlaps? The, the, the process is that we are going to erase, we're going to delete that polygon and we're going, we are going to redelineate again, okay? By using this avoid intersection in the snapping options uh, uh, configuration. So, first of all, we're going to select our uh, our uh, polygon, okay? We open the attribute table. Well, this. Well, we let's do it in the with the attribute table, and then you find you have to find the the. Uh, you have to find whether. The attributes, the the the, the data within uh, well, attached to that polygon. Okay, so this is the EA one zero five seventeen eleven nine province bar. Okay, so how do we uh, how do we so we have to, we need to save that uh, data in a text file. For example, I create a new text file. And then if you make copy and paste, mm. so we can just okay say you can copy one by one the fields. So we can do this using the uh, using the attribute table, or I will show you another method that maybe is more user friendly. Okay, so you can do it using the attribute table. So you go to the attribute table and you copy and paste. All the uh, all the attributes, okay, into a text because we're gonna delete it, okay. We're gonna kill it, so we don't want to lose that data, okay. Another, so I have stored my data. Another way to do it, okay, rather than going into the attribute table and look to that, there's a, an identification tool, identify features. Is this one with the blue circle and the information symbol, the I, that we can click on then. And if we click on the polygon, it will appear a panel with all the information field by field. And then you can actually copy copy features attribute and if you go to the text file it copies uh, everything all together again okay follow me uh, in the screen please we go to the identify features okay have you found the uh, the button 
you, we click on the polygon that we are going to delete. And we have here a new window with all the information. Do you have that window? No? Well, I will pass by. And then you click on Actions here, and you say Copy Feature Attributes. It will copy it into the clipboard, and then if we go to, the, to our text file, we paste, and it's all uh, stored in our text file. Like this, when we create a new polygon, we are going to be able to populate uh, what we have uh, deleted. Okay? What have we done wrongly here? Me first. We haven't done a backup. So someone sends you a shape file, you have started to edit in, fixing gaps, deleting polygons, and it, what if I did something wrong and I need to recover the data? Okay, so when we edit, when we start editing, make a copy. You make EA to clean 20 November 2018 and you keep it apart and then you start working with the duplicate. Okay, because if I imagine now I delete this polygon, I save edit, I forgot to save the information of that polygon. If I have a backup, I can check out on that uh, shape file and bring back the data. Okay? Okay, so now, first, we're going to check on our snapping tools that we have, we sure that we have check on avoid intersection. Okay? This will delete the overlaps automatically. Okay? So what we're going to do is just, now is the funny part. We're going to delete this. So we click on the bin button or just we uh, use the delete a key. So there's no uh, polygon anymore here. And now, because the overlaps, you know, it's very, it's very complicated to find them. The gaps, you get this, this, this uh, red footprint. But for the, for the overlaps, the topology checker just tells you that there's a polygon with overlap. But in this case, it's a small one, but when you have a huge polygon, you don't want to check over the 1,000 vertex where the overlap is, okay? It takes too long and it's very frustrating. So the best way is to delete and regenerate, okay? So now I have... Uh, erase it and now I have to draw again the uh, polygon. So what I'm gonna do is to create, click on add a feature, okay, and you see instead of going vertex by vertex I'm surrounding. So in five clicks and then once I have surrounded I right click for the moment, uh, I leave I leave this. Well, I re I add the attributes on the uh, of the of this layer, but I want to show you. And now we have recreated the polygon, and the overlap has been fixed. Oof! This silence. <laughs> <laughs> I go over again. <laughs> so, I have deleted the polygon. And since I have this option, avoid intersection, when I draw around boundaries, these overlaps will be automatically deleted. Because the snapping tools is not allowing me to have intersection. So when I draw an intersection, automatically get rid of it. Okay, so I don't need, this is a small polygon, but when you have a huge polygon with 3,000 vertex, you don't want to spend one day going 
vertex by vertex redrawing the polygon. You prefer to zoom out, make, draw a rough shape around the gap that you have created, and your boundaries are automatically created and topologically clean. Okay? Again, I delete the polygon and then I draw around the gap. Okay, left click, left click, once I'm done, right click, and then I will go to the through the text and I will copy and paste. Well for the moment. You know, and then I repopulate the Kina number is 105, sector very urban. So it takes a little while, it takes a little bit longer to repopulate the, um, all of the fields. But we save time fixing the geometry errors. And when we check the uh, when we check, we don't have we don't have uh, overlaps. Okay, the overlaps are in the other um, polygon. Okay. Why I'm saying that it's very important to first clean the gaps? Because if I have Okay? For example, this the program has detected that I have an overlap so I'm going to remove it, and then I'm going to draw roughly around the gap. If I have a small gap here, I'm generating a new part, a new piece of that EA. So I'm generated another error rather than cleaning. So first, I need to have this clean in order to uh, well to be able to clean properly the overlaps. Okay, this is the reason why we first what you will see in the in the examples that you are gonna work. If you have gaps around, when you draw around the gap, you you will be generated small polygons all over. Okay. You have to set up the snap options and you have to be sure that you have checked avoid intersections. If not, you're gonna draw a huge overlap. Okay? Which has a easy solution. You just delete it, check on avoid intersection and redraw the polygon. The last one, the last one is easy because I, I, I create some, this uh, piece of uh, shapefile, it has, it didn't have uh, invalid geometries, not many, so I generated uh, a couple of them. So if you go to the list of errors, you will have the third type of error we were looking for, the invalid geometries, okay? Well, first of all, I was forgetting something that I'm going to explain uh, uh, quickly, okay? What if we have a case, well, here you, here you will see step by step, okay? Which buttons do you have to click on? So in the presentations, if tomorrow you think, oh, I forgot what... Uh, what I learned yesterday, or how was, because we are going to learn many things, that it's, it's normal, that the day after is like, oh my God, 
how was the cleaning, uh, how was the process to clean topologies. Here in this PowerPoint, you have everything explaining step by step, okay? So select the polygon, selection tool, clear, uh, delete the polygon, add new feature, okay? Draw the new polygon, fill the attributes, validate the stand, all the process. But what happens when our EA is not s completely surrounded by other EAs? For example, the coastal EAs. How do we deal with that? It's easy. What we are going to do is to create an auxiliary polygon, a fake polygon, on the coastal side to create the boundary, okay? And then we just delete the, coast, the, the EA polygon with the overlap problem, draw it, and then be sure that we are removing the auxiliary polygon that we have used to create the boundary of the coast, okay? It's just by you create a new polygon, you Maybe you write something weird like EA code 999999 to be able to recognize it in case you forget to delete it, okay? So, and then the invalid geometries. Most of the invalid geometries are easily, are very easy to find because there's one of the vertex highlighted with a green cross with a green X okay so if you go to your heroes try to find the invalid geometries and try to find these green crosses for example the first invalid geometry is here you see that it's it's highlighted with this big red footprint okay the first thing that we have to do is to remove the footprint because we cannot see anything, okay? And then we click on the new tool and we just click on the feature to highlight the vertex belonging to that EA. And it's easy to find those green vertex, these invalid vertex. So the way to clean that it's just to find a way to see, to try to find out what's going on here. Okay, okay, here what's going on is that we have, okay, the, the, the polygon was flipped. Okay, so we just need to, to try to fix or try to bring this back to the to the old uh, situation okay and maybe okay and then if we check the extent the error has been fixed sometimes we have vertex overlapping so the way to clean that is just to select it when it's turning blue, just uh, delete one of the one of the tools, the one of the nodes, and that's all. Okay, because we only need one node, no two nodes. Okay, so you will see that comparing with the gaps and the overlaps, invalid geometries are are easy business. Okay, are easy to to <laughs> to fix. So here, for example, again, we uncheck this show heroes option. We activate the new tool. We select the polygon and we see that here there's a green cross. This, this, is, uh, this was made by me. And we need just to, just to, yeah, try to put the, put the vertex in the right position. We have an additional error here. There's two vertex overlapping. I select them. Once the small square has turned in blue, it means that I'm selecting. Just press the delete key 
and one of the overlapping nodes is going to be deleted. Okay? So we clean that and we go for lunch. Please, again, do not forget to save your edits. Cleaning topology errors. So just to summarize a little bit, we have learned how to detect topology errors. The three type of topology errors we need to correct when we are working with EA frameworks are gaps, overlaps, and invalid geometries. We have understood um, these topology errors, the, the, and we know how to fix them, okay? Find them and fix them. So let's, uh, just uh, two, late, two last uh, tips when we are working with topologies. Well, three indeed. The first one, you have learned the process, you have learned how to fix uh, few errors, few examples of these errors. The only way to learn uh, how to clean topologies is by, by doing a lot of. Do, do a bunch of uh, topology errors. So if you think that this is something useful for your, that this is a skill that you need to understand and to learn for your, or to undertake afterwards in your, in your job position, I recommend you to go through this uh, exercise and work on, on this example. You have 500 uh, examples. So it's, 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 and you have all the different uh, type of errors, different levels of complexity. So having, it's, it's the same for the rest of the, the, uh, the exercises and, uh, and the modules, no? You, we can go slightly through, uh, through, a net, through a subject, but it's up to you later on uh, how deep you want to uh, keep learning, okay? And how deep you want to review these lessons, use these exercises, and use the uh, PowerPoint slides to help you to go through by your own. Okay, then the second one, do not forget to save your edits. QGIS, do not save edits automatically as the uh, Word or PowerPoint or Excel does, okay? So every two minutes, don't forget to save your edits. When you are on editing session, you will find that sometimes the uh, software becomes a little bit uh, dodgy, it freezes, okay? After a cleaning or after a long editing session, after half an hour, the, sof the, 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 the software starts to get stuck at that point, Safe edit, safe project, close the project and open it again, okay? But we keep the reflex of safe edit every, well, every time we can or every time we remember. Third one, remember, your, the projection of your layer has to be the same than the projection in the project. If not, when you are clicking on the error, the project will send you somewhere else, but not uh, straight to the error, okay? Because the topology checker is using the projection from the project, okay, from the canvas. And the layer, if it's different, it won't work, okay? So this is, uh, this is important in case you find yourself with this type of, of problem, okay? Now we're working in an exercise where we are going to use an EA framework and we are going to work on that EA framework. We are going to populate the attribute table, okay? And undertake different operations. Okay, what I want you to do is like if you want, you can save your current project. You call it topology, check-in, etc. And then you open a new one. This is important. It's important that we open a new one because the one we were using for the topology, it's using 
uh, Fijian local grid. And now we're going to load a uh, shape file which is in uh, WGS84. And we might find problems or we will need to readjust these uh, projection settings in the project. So the, the best way to avoid this, since we are going to start from, from scratch with a new project, is just save your current project and open a new one. Okay? And then we are going to load this one. We go to Module 2 Layers EA Framework South Tarawa. Well, uh, S T A R E A S forty three twenty six, and we open the attribute table. So I'm gonna follow my own instructions. This. So we are not going to use the topology checker anymore. So instead of having this menu, this panel occupying space in our in our uh, in our interface, okay. What we are going to what we can do is just to go here to the the close button, and like this we we free up space. In the in the interface, okay. The identifying results as well, same. So let's open that uh, that. Sh so we go to layers, EA framework, Safterawa. Open, okay, and then we open the attribute table. Okay, so we see that we have 205 rows, but we only have the EA codes. And uh, it's a bit sad, no? You see an attribute table like this, and it's like, oof, there's nothing there, just EA codes. So we're gonna, in this exercise, we're gonna learn how to populate this attribute table, but instead of, e populating the data, the table manually, which is something that I do not recommend you to do because it's too much work <laughs> and because there's other faster, uh, more efficient ways to do, okay, that. So, um, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so just we well we have taken a look by clicking on that attribute table uh, icon and then what are we going to do is we are going to create a new um, a new field okay we're going to create the island name field okay we know that all those uh, EAs they belong to South Tarawa Island so we're going to create a new field called uh, Iceland, Island Name, okay? And we're going to populate the name South Tarawa in all of the rows, okay? As I was mentioning yesterday, we can do this in Excel and then import the table and connect it. I will show you how to connect tables from, from Excel, but let's use the field calculator, which is... Uh, that I think is a tool that we, we need to know very well because it's very useful, okay? So we go to Field Calculator and we click on the small abacus. Okay, then we check on the Create New Field. Okay, we add the name uh, we add the name of the field that it's, in my case, I put I underscore name. For the field names, I recommend you to avoid blank space, weird, uh, well, weird, uh, strange symbols, okay? Keep it simple. 
maybe if we avoid underscore uppercase, oh sorry, uh, not underscore, um, uppercase, or, you know, keep it simple, okay? No blank space, simple names, it's better. Short, if we can. And then we're going to, since we are populating what? Are we populating a number or a text string? Because we, are, we, are, we want to populate with the name of South Tarawa, the name of the island. So we have to choose well the type of field we want to create. So we're going to, if we want to write in each of the cells South Tarawa, we will need to select text as a uh, field type. Okay? Then, since we are going to put names, we, are, we don't know how long are those uh, names. We, we say, okay, let's give 25 characters for that field. Okay? And then, we are going here in the expression panel, okay, we are going to write in uh, South Tarawa, okay, you, you see in all these expressions we're going to use from in the field calculator and I'm going to, they are all provided here in the presentations, okay, you see here. So if you, instead of trying to type or read from there, I recommend you to go to the presentation and copy and paste. Okay, and then, and in some of the cases, for in the module 5 where the expressions are more complex, all the expressions, you will find them in a text file that is called expressions. Okay, so you will be able to open that, copy and paste. Like this, we don't get stuck with, I forgot a bracket, I forgot a comma, I forgot a symbol, okay? We don't want to get stuck on that, okay? The, let's, let's do the things easy and uh, let's prioritize the, the fact that we understand the, lo the logic on the expressions. Also, in, um, so when in the, in the field calculator, when we add, when we want to uh, include into an expression uh, a text string, okay, we surround that text string, okay, with the simple, how is it called, uh, apostrophe? How is it called in English, the simple apostrophe? Quotation. Quotation, thank you. And the double? So the simple quotations, do we understand that, uh, okay, so for double quotation, it's double. Simple quotation, simple, okay? So, simple quotation. So we write South Tarawa surrounded by simple quotations. And then you will see that in my output preview here, you will be, well, it will be displayed South Tarawa. If we have null or South Tarawa, it's good if we have error in red uh, font, there's something wrong with our expression. There's something wrong with the, um, the, the with this symbol or this uh, sub problem with, the, with something missing, okay? So once our expression has been validated, because in the output preview it says, okay, software looks like we're going to populate that with South Tarawa, you will see that the OK button gets activated. It's activated. And then we just click. And if we check in the uh, attribute table, now all our rows have been populated with the name South Tarawa. So now we have an island name field with South Tarawa, with this information. So we have populated our attribute table, our field, with five clicks, okay? So this is the, the beauty of the field calculator, okay? And then, actually, we're going to do two things. Since we want to, because we have different village codes, it's not the same example as South Tarawa, that all the rows have, have the same attribute. Now we have villages. 
there's uh, 16 villages in South Tarawa and we, are, we don't want to go one by one type in the different 16 villages, okay? It's too much work. Uh, so, there's two things that we're going to learn. We're going to learn to how to import a table from, uh, from a report, for example, that has the village code and the name of the village. And we're going to, this is from outside, so we're going to import a CSV table. And we have to prepare our table to get the code that is going to link both data sets, which is going to be the village code. Okay, so in our table, in the attribute table, we need to create the village code in order to connect it into with the external uh, table. So first of all, we're going to load the table, okay? Because we need to have, take a look and see how the village code looks like because they have to be exactly the same. So we go to module 2, layers, EA framework, village names. Remember that to load a table, we have to use this button, the one with the comma. Okay? We used it uh, yesterday to load household locations, to load plots. Or, yeah, better to use that. Okay? But this, there's a tricky part here. We are not importing points. Okay? Village, CSV, Module 2, a framework, village names, okay? This table has no geographic uh, component, has no coordinates, okay? So you know that here the OK button is disabled because we need to tell to the software that we are not importing any geometry, just data just a common table. Okay, so we need to click here in no geometry. And like this, our OK button will be enabled. Okay? And it's now when the village names uh, table appears in our layers panel. And then we can open it as uh, we can open the table going to open attribute table. And then we can take a look on this. So we have 184 rows. And this is the village name for the whole uh, Kiribas. OK? So the, the village code looks like this. It's uh, three to four digits. OK? Code. So we need to find a way to reproduce the same code here for South Tarawa using that um, using that field. Okay? So to create, so we need to create a, a village ID. that will allow us to connect with the table, okay? So we are going to use the field calculator. So we go back to the, to the PowerPoint. So the instructions, open the attribute table and check the field, which is a three to four digits length code. So select the South Tarawa EAs open the field calculator and first create a new field called village ID okay which is going to be a number an integer okay because the village ID it's an integer because it's a line on the right side yes it doesn't matter. We can join different titles. I will show you how. The staff, the, the what, because then when we are going to connect, we can select which field from 
both of, it's like it's, it is not like in Stata that I have to so you can control that you can say this field with this name it's going to be connected with this other field with this other name okay so we just uh, we create a, v, a field name vid we need a number because to connect and well, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so it's better to have that both fields has the same format integer connecting to integer okay so we're going to create a integer a number a whole number uh, field with uh, a length of 10 digits will be enough and then we're going to introduce we're going to enter this expression okay what this expression means so my um, for example, this first it's zero seven o two o o four four one o o four one. The idea here is that my VID code is these four uh, first digits. Okay, so. I want to create a new field that it's just it's but by cropping this code, gathering, retrieving the first four digits. To do that, I use the expression. So do you remember that yesterday we used the expression right that we were adding a couple of zeros into the code and then we were cropping? So we use the expression left because I'm retrieving the digits the first four digits from the left so before we start uh, so before we start uh, with the expression let's think about what do we want to do we want to capture the first four digits there's an expression there's a tool which is called left because I'm attacking the digit code the code from the left, left, open brackets. When we add a field in our in the expression, we put double quotes. The field that we want to crop it's EA <laughs> underscore 2015, comma. How many digits do you want to grab? from the EA code. One, two, three, four, four. And we close brackets. Is it clear the... So in case we wanted to get just the, the last four digits, we would use right, because we were attacking from the right side. OK? Yes? So you mean in that uh, attribute <laughs> Yep. That's the first four characters is the village code. <coughs> because I check on the table how the village code looks like. Okay, and then I wanted to crop. Actually, I I use a trick. Okay, to make things easier, because by default this should be an integer, and we shouldn't have have this zero on at the beginning. Okay, with the, with the, you know, the village code, we have ID code that goes from 0, 01 to 22. Okay, so if we put it in integer, we will have from 1 to 9, only 1, and from 9 to 22, from 10 to 22, two digits. And this wouldn't work. Because if we say left, Four and uh, my code looks like this for the island one up to nine. We will take up to here, and with the island coded from 10 to 22, we will crop up to here. That's why I cook the code a little bit to, to avoid the. But this is something that we can. That, that's why I had the, this code in a string, because the, the, the test. Uh, strings 
allow you to get uh, to start codes by zero. Okay, and then you like working this way. You always have the same length for every for the for all the for all of the codes. Okay, but because I didn't want to complicate things, it's this is gonna work well. Okay, and we're gonna understand very well the concept and the and the expression. Okay, and we don't get uh, mad, you know. And then there's another way to to cook to modify, but just we we keep it simple, and then we can keep uh, learning, okay? So, have you tried the, the expression? So if you, wanna, if you want, I can repeat it here, and then I'm, I'm passing by the, the different uh, places. So we said that it's gonna be called VID, it's gonna be a number, and I'm gonna use the expression I put. So either you can try to type it, you copy and paste from the PowerPoint presentation, or I, what I used to do is left, okay? Here, you have different, uh, different elements, that expressions, field and values, etc. So here, you will see that I have field and values, EA 2015. If I double click, it includes the field name in double quotes automatically. And then, four. You see that here, downward, still I have this red text, expression is invalid, okay? Because there's something missing. In this case, it's a bracket. But once the, my expression is right, I have an output preview, which is 070702. And I can click OK. I'm allowed to do it. So I just click OK. And if I open my... Attribute table, I have generated the village code using EA code. Okay? And then, do not forget, save your edits. Because since we start working with a field calculator, it enables automatically the editing session. Okay? So now we're going to, now we have the VID code in both tables. So now we are able to connect, okay, them. So we go back to the, we close the, the attribute table, we close the, um, the field calculator, and we go to properties, and we on the left on the left side of the menu you will see one section named as joins okay which is can show you so i select south tarawa because it's the one i want to and then open properties and here joins Okay, and I have this menu. Okay, so go to properties, joins, and we just click on this green cross, okay, add a new join. And we have this new window. So, Join layer. There's only one layer to join in the project. That's simple. So I'm going to join my enumeration area framework to the table called village names. Okay? This join field. This is the field from the table. Which field we want to connect? Which field? Which or well here we have to choose the two fields that are that both tables have in common okay so from the village uh, names table we, 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 we open the attribute table we check we check which is the the name of the field we want to connect we do the same with the you know, with the shape file so we select VID 2015 and from the shapefile, the, the field that we have already created. 
Then we have an option. Okay, we can select which field from the external table we want to keep. Either we can connect everything, but if it's a very big table and we are just interested in a couple of fields, we will keep just these fields that are interested uh, that we are interested on. And then you will see that there's a custom field name prefix. So you can click and remove because it's going to add the, the name of the table as a prefix to the field to help us to recognize where those fields are coming from. Okay? And then once everything is it's set, we just click OK. So I'm going to do it here again, VAD 2015. VAD, since I don't want to keep all the fields, I'm just going to take VAD name, island code, and island name. And I don't want to have this prefix on my fields name. So I click OK. I go. So now it seems that we have three joining. It seems that it looks OK. Sometimes you will see that it gives it gives error. So the best way is to repeat the process because sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit, well, but it should work. We click OK and then to um, check that we have retrieved the information from the external table, we click right click, open the attribute table and ta -ta -tan, we have the village ID name, the ID code, and another I, uh, island name field. So now our table looks more, yeah, it's not so sad. It's just we have more information, more data. Um, OK? So uh, just a little question. These uh, fields that we have already, attach to our attribute table, they are still belonging to the table. They are temporary, they are virtual, okay? They are there because the project is to saying, okay, we are retrieving that data from that external table. If we want to, um, if we want to save those fields as a shape file, the best way to, to make this data set more consistent is to save uh, the enumeration area, is to save the shape file as a new shape file. Okay? Because imagine tomorrow I send you that shape file thinking that all this information has been attached. No. Because it's these new fields that are coming from the table join, they are still temporary, they are still virtual. Okay? So if I want to um, keep those fields for the future in my shape file, in my, DBA, in, my, in my attribute table forever and ever, I just need to save us, browse and call it like uh, South Tarawa EAs, uh, data. And now the fields I have here in my attribute table are already in my shape file. You see, when I check on, on the properties in fields, you see those symbols, they mean that they are virtual symbols, okay? This is the, 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 the first shape file that we have uh, loaded. But when I check in the EA framework layer that I have saved once I have uh, undertaken the uh, table join now those those fields they they are they belong to the shape file okay they are not virtual 
they are there. Now I can share the table, the shapefile with you, and you will get the table with the village name, the ID codes, and the, and the uh, island names. Okay, so. Those, you know, those, we have used two ways of generating or populating the attribute table. We have used uh, our EA field to generate the village ID code. And for example, for the island code, we have used external data. But we could have done the same, we have done with the village code to generate the, the island code just by left EA, but cropping only two digits rather than four. Okay, so you see that there's always different ways to get the same result, okay? We just need to find the, 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 the one which is more convenient for us. Another option would be, once we have the VAD code, I work in Excel, I add everything I want in that table, and then I know already how to join a table coming from Excel into GIS. Okay, so if for me it's better to use, rather than using the field calculator, I prefer to use Excel because it's easier for me. Now I can work in Excel apart, and then I know how to bring tables from Excel into GIS. Just remember, G QGIS, does not read Excel files. It reads CSV brackets MS DOS. Okay? Awesome. Okay, this is the part of uh, virtual the virtual field. So we have two options. Either we save us, which is the fastest way, okay, we save us and everything is consolidated, or we use the field calculator to create real fields using the join fields. Okay? But I think that, um, well. Okay, so everybody right now has a shape file with a attribute table looking like this because we need this to uh, carry out the next exercise. Okay? So I need uh, you to confirm that every we are all in the same page. We save any edit we have undertaken in the South Tarawa EAs. We save our project because we're gonna use it afterwards. So we're gonna save our project. You can call it, we can save it into module two, okay? And we can call it South Tarawa, for example, okay? Because we are going to keep working with this a little bit more, so it's better we, we save the, the project. In order to avoid, if we close the project, we have to load again everything and, well. So now our project, as I was mentioning this morning, is saving these three layers, plus the table, plus the join between the table and the layers, the styles, and everything, okay? Just that. So, um, let's generate the, uh, I'm gonna explain you a little bit here in the, what are we going to do? Because sometimes we talk about tools and geo process, but it's better to understand, because sometimes we get lost with the tools and the names and, uh, okay? Geoprocessing, it's a fancy name, no? When you say, what are you doing? Geoprocessing, yeah. So, but, <laughs> but, um, but well, so this is the, the, the main idea of this is that in, in, in South Tarawa, for example, I have Vecio, okay? Vecio, it's Vecio, okay? The code is 716, okay? Within Vecio, I have
all these EAs. All these EAs have the same, well, they have v EA code, which is uh, 716 and five more digits, but they have in common the same village code. So all those, all these, okay? All the same VID code. So the next uh, tool we're going to use, it's a tool that is called Dissolve. And what it does is that it dissolve, it merge all the polygons in one polygon with a condition. And we have a condition. You're going to merge all the polygons that have the same village code. So we don't have to do it manually, OK? You're going to say, OK. You're going to find all the polygons with the same village code. And this is going to happen in the village 715. OK? So the tool is going to remove all the boundaries in between and we're gonna get one polygon which is the village polygon the polygon with the village ID 716 is this clear so now we can go through the geo process <laughs> So we go to vector in the top uh, menu bar, geoprocessing dissolve. And we have this new window, OK? So we have to first select the right uh, enumeration area framework, where both layers will be OK, since we have the VID code there. OK, then we are sure that we are not, we, we are check. By default, this option is check, which means that it doesn't use any condition. It's going to dissolve everything into one feature, OK, into one multi-part feature. So imagine that it would do that if we were creating the, the Kiribati uh, coastline. Okay, we will say, okay, you're going to dissolve all the EAs and we will, go, we will get only one multi-part polygon for the entire Kiribati. But we don't want that, okay? Or for the entire South Tarawa. So, uh, so we uncheck dissolve all option and then we select the fields as they are shown in the image, okay? This is the fields that we want to add in our village layer. So I don't want EA codes because it's not relevant. I just want VID and village name. And if you want island name and, uh, and island code, if you want, OK? So we use these arrows. We select the field and we use these arrows to drag the polygons, OK? Then we click in Run. And you see this is the EA framework, and this is the village. OK? So I leave this. Uh, do you want me to do it in the software? Let's see. So vector, geoprocessing tools, this of Saftarawa data and check this of all. I'm getting village name. And no, I don't want island name. And village name. Okay? 
and then here it's dissolve and in brackets it's written create temporary layer what I used to do when I do in processing it just I for the moment for me it's okay if I have a temporary layer a temporary layer it does not get saved into the project when I close the project if I reopen it this will be disappear okay even if I save it's a temporary and it's good just to create a temporary uh, layer see that everything has worked uh, well and if we are happy with the with the result then we save us and we put it on our layers folder okay so run and -da 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 -da, uh, it did work so and if we open the attribute table for dissolve so this is, there are 16 rows um, something I, I did something wrong with the field selection maybe I kept uh, all of them but we have the VAD and the village name all, are, all, all of them are unique okay so we have created the village boundaries from the enumeration area framework so now I'm gonna I'm going to propose you an exercise that uh, tries to summarize all the uh, all the subjects all the yeah all the things we have learned this uh, during this half uh, during these two last days okay so we are still working on the uh, on the, this is why I was asking you to save the project and save your you you edit and save your village um, shape file. If you haven't done yet, please save those layers called dissolve because they are temporary. Save them as village uh, uh, VID or village or South Tarawa village. We need to consolidate all the data we have in the project because we're gonna make an exercise with um, with with this, those elements, okay? So, we have our project, South Tarawa, Unumeration Area Framework, Village Boundaries, okay? So, and now we, um, we're gonna use the household locations, okay? That we will, we are going to load them right now, okay? So, they are asking us, so we have the, the original EA Framework, they want to run, a, this is quite close to a real case I had like uh, three months ago for a survey. So I thought that it was a, a nice exercise, okay, because this is real, okay. And this is a typical staff, a GIS officer in uh, NSAO or in Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry will uh, typical exercise or the typical task job that one of us uh, have to undertake okay or should be able should be capable to undertake so um, they are asking us to uh, update the EA framework in order to have enumeration areas with a range of uh, number of households in between 30 to 70 okay we need enumeration areas with where the maximum number of households is 70 and the minimum number of households is 30 okay so the so we need to count how many households do we have in each of the uh, in each of the enumeration areas and select which enumeration areas are have less than 30 households and merge those enumeration area with the adjacent EAs okay if we have a EA with 40 and next to this another EA with 25 we will merge them together as we have done this morning if we find EAs with more than 80 households 
or more, sorry, more than 70 households, we will need to split them into two parts. And we will need to split them trying to have the same number of households in both parts. And at the same time, um, trying to find a nice boundary that is going to be easier, easy to follow by the enumerators. Okay? So, layers for this exercise, EA framework for South Tarawa, we have it already. The household locations, because we are going to need them to count how many households we have in each EA and to more or less roughly see how many households we have in a provisional enumeration area. And also it is necessary to load the satellite image backdrop to find those paths, to find those rows, those landmarks to delineate uh, uh, proper boundaries, which is something that it's going to be quite complicated. So, okay, tips. There's uh, or advices or yes, tips. Save a copy of the current framework because we're going to start editing, okay? The original EA framework, we don't want to modify it. We're going to create a new one, a new one, a new EA framework for this survey, okay? So any edit, if imagine that if we merge two EAs and then we save, we, we are modifying the original framework. Because usually for the EA frameworks we use for census and the year frameworks we use for surveys, sometimes they are different, okay? So we save us and we call it a survey EA framework or South Tarawa EA survey, okay? And this is the EA, this is the shape file that we are going to edit, that we are going to merge and split, okay? Then there's a tool that is quite useful that it's called count points in polygon that it will go it, it, it's going to count all the points within each of the EA polygons it will help us to identify which uh, which um, which EAs do not uh, sorry do not um, which EAs have more than 70 households or less than 30 households, okay? And uh, you will see that once we run this tool, a temporary count layer will be created with an extra field with the point counts calculated for each EA, okay? So, um, so first step, we load EA framework, we have it, so we create a copy of the current EA framework and we save it as EA framework survey, okay? Because this is the one that we are going to edit. So let's do this. So I'm gonna Save us in module two. Yeah, EA framework is okay. Or if you want to create a new, okay. So South Tar survey. And then the other enumeration area layers we can remove them because we are we, we we don't need them anymore okay and like this we prevent by accident editing those layers okay so we keep villages we keep South Tarawa survey I would change the style I like to work with uh, transparent uh, with transparent fill, because if I have to delineate new boundaries, 
and I have to use the background, the satellite image backdrop behind, it's, it's, it's easier to work with this. Okay, so we know how to do this already. We go to Pro Style or to Properties, Style. We click on Simple Fill. We go to the Fill um, drop down menu. We select Transparent Fill. Then we we set uh, a bother that it's gonna have more contrast to increase the visibility and then we just increase the outline width to yeah because it's 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 this is important the way we format the um it's important to to have a nice format to 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 have uh, for the layout uh, for the map composers but when we work with maps we sometimes we spend like 8 hours in front of that shape file okay so if we it's 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 not a nice experience to spend eight hours in front of a fluo green shape file. Okay, at the end of the day, you are like almost blind. So we try to find nice colors that help us that uh, to work faster in a better way. Okay, so before we start working, we try to find the style that will help us to work. So. We add that, we add the backdrop. Okay, we put it on below. And we add the household locations. Household locations. Okay. Okay, this is, so you see that from the beginning that we only had one EA framework just with EA codes. Now this looks much better and we can start doing proper GIS work. Okay, are all of you in this uh, situation? Okay, if you are, please save. Okay, so make a copy of the EA framework because we're going to edit it um, load the point layers set the style to to improve your improve the visibility uh, during the the operation we're going to undertake and load the satellite image backdrop and then we save the changes in the project Okay, do you see something like this in your screens? So it's, it's, I see some of you like having problems to get access to the uh, layers. When we work in GIS, you see in just one day we have generated like 10, 12, 15 files. So we have to be very organized. Okay, we have to be, since the beginning, have a clear idea where do we store the layers that we are working with. Spend, I, 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 it happens to me as well that sometimes I'm a bit lazy, you know, like typing the names. It's like, oh my God, again I have to type because I'm saving shape files every five minutes, no? But it's important that we, we use proper names that help us to know which modifications we have undertake uh, we have undertaken or um, whether it's the original shape file or the uh, village shape file or the one we're going to use for the survey okay so this is important and try to be consistent on the way we store the data so i'm going to show you how the count points in polygon tool works so, it's all here, but well, so we go to Vector Analysis Tools Count Point in Polygon and you will see this window here, okay? So we need, we have two elements, the polygons, 
layer that we want to use, okay, to count this tool. What um, this tool count how many points do we have in each of the polygons from the uh, polygon layer, okay? So we need to select the polygon layer. It's going to be our EA polygon shape file, and the point layer is going to be the household locations, okay? And then there's another parameter that is count field name, okay? That is just the name of the field where we are, where the, the count information is going to be displayed. It doesn't create a field in your original shapefile. The way this tool works is that it creates a new a copy of the EA framework with this additional field, this additional column with the counts, okay, at the end. So we have to be careful afterwards uh, to distinguish which is the counting layer and which is the layer that we are going to edit to create the, the, field, the to merge, to split, etc. So we just, ah, and another question. This is prepared to work, I hope so. Huh? But uh, if the point layer and the polygon layer, they are in different coordinate system, this tool won't work, okay? So, as I have uh, mentioned, mentioned before, when we start a new project, first we, we, we need to, to prepare uh, all the data we have. It's stored in, our, in the right place, same coordinates, set the styles to make our work easier, etc., okay? Save, for example, now is a good moment to save the project. Okay? So, we go to vector, we go to, uh, it was analysis tools, yeah? Count points in polygon. So, here we have two options. It's after our survey or it's after our villages. I don't want to count points in villages. I want to count points in enumeration areas. And, the only point layer we have is household location, so it's okay. Then count field name, number of points, it's, it's okay for me. And you see that we have this create temporary layer. We can use it because it's something that we, have, we are going to be checking. We are going to go through this process many times in order to check that the, 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 the new EAs we are generated or the EAs that we are merging um, cope the, uh, with the conditions, okay? More than 30, less than 70 uh, uh, households per EA. Okay, so you, need, you see that now we have a EA layer, a polygon layer, the same as the universal area layer, but if we open the attribute table, we have this field that is count number of points, okay? So, how do we find the EAs with less than 30 households and more than 70 households? Well, since we are only working with 205 uh, rows, we can just click on the, on the heading of the table and it's going to sort the data, okay? And then we just we see that we have uh, 20, yeah, 20 household, 20 EAs with less than 30 um, households. And then if we click again on the, on the heading, it will sort from the biggest to the smallest. And we have like 13 EAs with more than 70 households. Okay. How do we find those households, okay? Uh, sorry, those enumeration area. We can label them, it's a good way, or we can just select them in the table, okay? And then we just click on this uh, 
zoom to selected rows, okay? Which is the one with the... It's, a, it's what is that? It's a, well, that one, okay? <laughs> okay? Yeah, the, 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 the icons in QGIS are like... Mm, Sometimes are a bit nonsense, but well, this has sense. But uh, okay, so we click here, and it redirect us to the uh, to the EA with one hundred uh, and one households inside. Okay. Everybody managed to count the points in polygons? Okay, no? Okay. Okay, I will pass by just to show you a couple of more things, okay? So imagine that uh, I want to, so I'm, I'm going to start working with uh, this EA, okay? And I say, okay, maybe if I cut, if I split following that road, Okay, I will get 50 households in each of the EAs, okay? How can I assess that in a simple way without not complicating my life too much, okay? Rather than splitting, okay, and counting points in polygons again, I can just take a look. So I will select my household locations, okay, and I'm going to select those points, so the points that are inside the EA that I presume that would be my split. But rather than using this rectangle selection, which is not very suitable because uh, it's going to be hard to select all those points in a polygon like, which doesn't look like a, doesn't look like a, a, a rectangle. So we have another option that is select features by polygon, okay? And then this selection method works like if we were uh, generating, generating a new polygon, you know? You use left click, left click, left click, left click, and when you're done with your polygon, right click. And then you select the points inside the polygon that you have delineated. It's not a layer, it's not a polygon, it's just a a perimeter to undertake a selection, okay? So, but I still need to count those points. I'm not gonna count them in the map. It's too much work. Uh, you, you see that I don't like to work much. <laughs> I'm a lazy one, but it's, um, when it's not necessary, there's no need to, to, to work. Um, so we need to be efficient, okay? So I will open the attribute table from the points and you see here in the, in the, on top, we have futures total 9,469, selected 46. So it seems that the split that I was uh, overseeing looks good. I had 101, 46, and uh, 50, 55. Looks good. It's it's more or less. I have nice boundaries. It's not the same number of household in each of the splits, but it's a good balance. Okay. Verily the same number of households. Nice uh, boundaries. Sell it. Okay. So um, so now what I'm gonna do is to well run the. Um, carry out the split. So I'm not going to work on the count polygon. I'm going to edit in my South Sarawak survey. So I start my editing session. I click on split feature. I start clicking or drawing my splitting line outside the EA as we were doing this morning. I follow the road. And then 
I finish outside the polygon. Left click outside the polygon, right click, done. Okay? But now I have two EAs with different E codes. What happened with the? But it's not getting update. Yeah. Okay? We will do this afterwards. When we have uh, finished with the split and the merge, uh -huh. to check it, that everything is okay, we will run another count points in polygons. Because you see, this is the, this is the temporary file yes. with the count, but the one we are editing is after our survey. Here, there's no count. Okay, but we have assessed with the selection tool how many points we had. Okay, so it's just a matter of assess and then draw the split. And then we need to add, just to finish, we need to add, well, now we have two EAs. We have two EAs with the same EA code, okay? So we need to create a survey EA code to uh, just to uh, generate unique ID codes from the original one. Okay, so since we are going to split uh, EAs, the best option is to add a digit at the end of the EA code. Okay, so I'm going to unselect this and I'm going to generate a new field which is called EA survey okay and my EA survey it's com it's gonna be generated by concatenating my EA code plus you can choose either use zero okay and then the split EAs are one or one, two, three. So you know that the non-split EAs are zero and the split EAs are one, two. Or you can choose to use one and then add if there's two EAs with the same one, two. Okay? So it's up to you. I prefer the option one. I don't like the option of adding letters because at afterwards, when you try to sort data, when you mix numbers with letters, it's kind of uh, complicated. And it's more homogeneous, it's more consistent when we use just numbers, okay? But well, it's something that, uh, so as you like, one or zero, what do you like the most? One. One? Well, after then you will do with so if I if you see that I just add one ah, it's gonna work okay so click OK and now I have my EA survey okay so now it's a matter of this is uh, 715.06821 and this is, seven, so I have to change one of these. So this is going to be 22. Okay? So if you want to check that out, you can use, instead of, if you prefer to use this identification tool, you can use it as well. Okay? Like this is 715.68, uh, well, this finishes, this ends on 682. And 
this finishes in A2-1. Yeah, it's supposed to be because I haven't saved, sorry. It should be two. Okay, now it's okay. Thank you. So now if I click on the identification tool and I think that if you if you select auto open form you will have this window that is going to appear and then you can edit on the attributes on that window that maybe it's a it's a I prefer the table uh, way but there are other people that I know that they prefer this identifying tool okay everything more or less clear because we're gonna have almost one hour to work on our own okay and I will be Anthony and me we will be uh, with you and um, so now something I don't have to forget I have to save my um, my changes do you want me to show you the example of the merge or we are good well the merge is more simple okay so this project is gonna be uh, a homework okay for tomorrow morning so we keep working today if you want to take a look because I think that it's 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 it's, it's a very good summary of all the stuff we have been working on during these two last days okay and I think that it's going to if you spend like just a half an hour, if you can see it together in teams this tonight, just one hour, just to get, take a look, I think it's going to be a, a refresh. And tomorrow morning, we can spend like 15 minutes just to see with you which part of the exercise was the, were the most uh, complicated or where did you got stuck, etc. Okay? So let's uh, let's work on the exercise, okay? So just make sure that you didn't select any EA, okay? The problem with the field calculator, if if we have one or two or three EAs, and then we run the the expression or the field calculator operator. These modifications, these changes are going to happen just in the selected EAs, okay? So, I am in, uh, I am in uh, editing mode, okay? Are you with me? Editing mode, open attribute table, click on field calculator, okay? And then select create a new field, we call it, for example, EA survey, we are all there, then we go to fields and values here in that menu, like this we are sure that we are entering the right E, uh, field name, we double click on EA 2015, then we use the string concatenation symbol and then we just add one and here downwards we see that the output preview looks good and my OK button is uh, activated, OK? It's activated. So I just click OK, and you see that now you have EA survey generated. And this is the field, this is the EA code that we are going to modify whenever we make split. One of the EAs will remain the same, one, and this, the other EA we will add 
2 as the last digit. Okay, like this we don't have duplicates. Is it clear? So this is something that we need to do before we start um, editing or modifying the enumeration areas. And don't forget, please, to save your edits.